Elizabeth. Hello. Came as soon as I could. So. Go, oh, is, is this a meeting with Elizabeth, your niece, my wife, or the Queen? Latter, I'm afraid. Right, then I know my place. What's the matter with him? Nothing. He's just feeling a little grounded. Ignore it. Right. All ears. I received a telephone call today from Robert E. Salisbury. It seems that even among his own people, the feeling is that our Prime Minister is not able to deal with a national crisis. Indeed, he could be seen to be responsible for that crisis. Hospitals overflowing, people dying. Now, as sovereign, you have the right to demand that a government in your name shows effective leadership. The opposition are now calling for a motion of no confidence. So, I would say the time has come for you to summon Churchill and... And what? Insist that he go. I can't do that. You can. And should. But wouldn't that violate the Constitution? As Queen, you have the right to be consulted, the right to encourage, the right to warn, also to appoint a new prime minister in the event of incapacity. And many would say that Churchill's behavior now constitutes incapacity. Then a revolution must come from within. They are trying. Well, then they must try harder. They will, but would prefer it to be bloodless. So I have asked for your help and influence. I cannot do it. I will not do it. Let's not forget it was Churchill who denied Philip's children his own surname. Dicky. And insisted that you live in Buckingham Palace. As alas did everyone else. And, and now with looters on the street and hospital corridors stacked with the dead, he is interested in only one thing. Stopping Philip flying. What? crisis cabinet meeting this morning when there should have only been one thing on the agenda, the unfolding national emergency. All our Prime Minister wanted to discuss was your husband's new hobby. 